Hey, low wing. Take a look at the fire. Okay, beat it. You don't mean a nip, you mean a nap. Yeah. First I take a nip, and then I take a nap. Oh. Well, how do I look? You get already the uniform. So quick. Now look, Christmas. If you're going to be my mechanic, I want you to remember one thing. Always get what you go after. No. It's not good for health, such a big rush around. But it's the American way. The American way? No, not the American way. The American way. Oh, um, American way. Yeah. How about this rush around? I've been here two weeks and I haven't been assigned a plane yet. We get plane today too? No, not till Thursday. Oh, Tuesday! Hey, on your feet oh. here, we got orders. Today I'm going to see Colonel Golas and get my wings. Wings? Dings. Oh. Come on. Bad shaky market! Oh. Hey, what goes on? This is more excitement than I've seen in two weeks. It's nothing. It's only my cousin Easter. He gets excited all the time. What about Banchek in the market, huh? Nothing. It's only a friend. He came on shopping trip here. This way is better. It's down the hill. Only $5,000 for me. <laughs> Cheap skates. Hurry up, a man, and load up with the food in the car. It's a quick, a please. Silbo, get the plenty meat, the big fat the pieces, no skinny bones. Like you know the woman. You, Felix, can the goods, plenty can the goods. Remember, no sardines, or they make me sick. Hokey dokey. Omar! Zomar! Mr. Banshek, you, you wish to buy something? Do not bother, Mr. Zomar, because we're going to help ourselves. <laughs> oh, have pity. Once I am the most richest grocer in Mozart. Not the hands. Now, now I'm going to be bankrupt. Do you complain? Once I am the most biggest general in Mozart. Now I am hungry. Mr. Banshek. The hands, please. I am glad to be a member of your native party. But can't you maybe rob somebody else once in a while? Why, Mr. Zoma, you want I should insult you, no? Nobody got to find merchandise like you. Huh? Idiot! What I told you about sardines, huh? Get the tomato soups. It's wonderful, the tomato soups. You don't mind customer makes little exchange, huh? Someday you pay, yes? Yeah? Someday, Zomar, yes, sure. Sure, when we have pushed out the military party which have robbed our people of our government, and we come back to power. Then you get paid. The police, like always, they give us the signal. I think maybe they want, maybe we go now, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna take it. No, 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 yeah. my last good wine. It's all right, charge to my accounts is for the good of my people. Mr. Banshee. You're gonna force me to do what I don't want to do. What are you gonna do? What I gonna do? Without food, I can be no more grocer. So, I tune up with your native party. That's what I gonna do. Well, that's a fine. Come on, hurry up. Hurry up, man. I'll load up the cars with the food. Quick, please. What have you heard from Vetchnikov? He's not back yet. Ah, what a guy. He tells me to come down here. Get a million laughs. Haven't seen him twice in two weeks. It's a very busy job flying civil airlines. Well, I'm glad he's busy. The excitement around this dump will give me low blood pressure. Sure it will. Everybody is getting, getting healthy in our, our country. Do you like our country? <laughs> she ain't bad for an island in the middle of the Pacific. Oh, 
Holy smoke, what was that? I should have been looking where I was going. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I hit you so hard. Well, please don't uh, apologize for saving my life. Oh, that's all right. Sometime you can return the fix. for Notre Dame? Not for, uh, Dame? Never mind. Thanks for what you did. Well, I was only giving back the favor. Right, we're even. You are all right? <laughs> what do you think? Hey, what was that anyhow, huh? Banchik and his bandits. Banchik? Yeah. I thought you said it was a shopping trip. Sure it was. Every month he comes for shopping. Well... Thanks to Banshek, anyway. Well, goodbye. And thank you again. Hey, wait a minute. You can't give me one of those Pullman Porter brush offs, you know. Brush offs? I don't understand. Let's, um, let's go and talk it over somewhere, huh? <laughs> but, uh, I don't even know who you are. Well, I'm the guy whose life you saved, who saved yours at... <laughs> 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 Lieutenant Kendall, Mozart Air Corps. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> this is Christmas. Christmas? He was a Christmas present to his mother, but she couldn't exchange it. <laughs> yeah. All our family, everybody have names like holidays. But we never get one. <gasps> Very interesting. Well, I'm Johanna Van Duren. Oh, a Hollander, huh? Yes. Any relation to the engineer that's building Fort Panasta? Yes, my father. Well, we both work for the government. Say, Christmas, I've got something very, very special I want you to do. Yes, Lieutenant. I want you to get me a monkey wrench. So long, monkey wrench. Yeah, so long. So long. You know, honey child, I was just beginning to think it was close season on pretty girls in Mozak. You Americans. You're handing me a, a rope? Oh, that's no rope, that's a line. You know, I've just been wondering. Where you been all this time, huh? Holland. Holland? Mm hmm You mean you came all the way here from, uh, there? Yes. But how come? On a boat. Oh, no, Chuck, you got me wrong. What I mean is this. Why didn't you go to the United States, huh? They invaded our country. We went where we could. Why the United States? Why the United States? Say, are you kidding? Why the United States? Why a million reasons? Double decker ice cream cones, football games, hot dogs, hot music. Oh, you must be kidding. Sure, you gotta be. You don't think I'd be drinking this stuff if I get a good cup of hot American coffee, do you? Huh? Well, if you miss your uh, double decker football so much. Why are you here? Well, uh... Well? Well, I might as well tell you the truth. There I was flying a transport. The ceiling was zero, zero. It was like flying around in a bottle of milk. And all of a sudden, my carbs iced up. You know what a carburetor is, huh? Mm -hmm. you, you know? Uh, well, here's a carburetor. Gasoline goes through it. There I was stuck. I had to pick a place to land. No, no, honey, that, it wasn't that place at all. It was a ski slide, same like that. So what do I do? I slide it right up the hill. What does she do? She ground loop. Yes? Well, to make a long story short, why, uh, I was grounded in the States, and, well, the big shots, they said it was pilot trouble, picked up my ticket, and so I powdered down here. Yes. You see, uh, I got a pal by the name of Pechnikov. Yes. You see, Pechnikov flies for the Civil Airlines, and, and uh, he's the guy that put me in this racket. Yes. Uh, hey, will you quit guessing me? Yes.
Reporting on our search for civil pilot Petchnikov, sir. 8,000 square kilometers covered. Both sides of aerial route to Mount Panasta. Yes, yes. No trace. Neither Petchnikov nor his plan. Thank you. Here we go. Oh, uh, Major Xanders? Yes? You maneuver them away from Petchnikov's claws. Naturally. Good thing you did. Petchnikov survived the crash. Amazing, these Russians. I'll finish him. Oh, hand me that box of cartridges. Please. We have 80,000 in gold cashed away now. Yes, but Ovid. I was just wondering, why don't you and I... You and I have been assigned to keep the gold from reaching the workmen at Mount Panasta. That's our only interest here. Those fortifications must never be completed. Do we understand each other? Perfectly. Yes. Colonel Gola speaking. No, I will handle that myself. It's, uh, it's really a beautiful country. Yeah, I'll bet it is. Why don't we get in your car and go sightseeing? I imagine you fancy yourself quite a sightseer. <laughs> well, I uh, <laughs> never had any complaints. Why the jungle is too dangerous? Besides, we might run out of gas. Oh, so they're wise to that in Holland, too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> no monkey wrenches in my life. No monkey wrenches in the whole country. But I got monkey. Who said monkey wrench? You, Lieutenant. I said monkey wrenches, Lieutenant. Don't you tell me. Get what you go after. Always get what you go after. This is the American way. I was just beginning to find that out. All right, all right. Be on American and take him back where you found him, will you? Yes. I'll take him back. He will be very lonesome. Lonesome? Yes. And Mr. Grubbles, you know, the zookeeper, he's now very lonesome too, I think. <laughs> but why? Because confidential. There was many monkeys in cage which I opened when Mr. Grubbles takes his afternoon naps. Now they are all gone with the wind. Okay, Scarlet. Just the same. Take them back where you found them. That's the boy. Uh, Mr. Lieutenant. Now what? I've been thinking. Well, that's a change. Maybe I don't want to be a mechanic for aeroplanes. No. Maybe I won't go back to my old occupation, to what I was doing. What were you doing? Nothing. Look, Christmas, why this sudden change of heart? I just find out. Yeah? Pechnikov. Maybe he been killed. Maybe. Yeah. Well, what'd you hear? He left with the gold for to pay the Panasta working men yesterday. Yeah, I know all about that. Go on. And they don't hear any more from him. Nothing. The pilot who carried last month's payroll crashed. They say it's that Banshek. Hijacking airplanes, huh? Oh, no. Patch must have been grounded somewhere. Perhaps. Well, come to think of it, he did tell me that that Civil Airlines was no better roses. Roses? It's, it's like taking my life in, in, in your hands. It's a good thing you are in Army Air Corps. It's not just dangerous. Get the monkey out of here, will ya? I gotta figure out what we're gonna do about Petchnikov. I get up with the monkey. The monkey, she, no, no one come to me. Oh, playing hard to get, huh? Yeah. Come on, let's give him a hand. Come on, that's for Come on, come on, monkey. Come on, play with Christy Stein's fellow. Come on. That's what. You know, I've just been thinking. That Golaz, he must be a nay number one lunkhead. What? Well, if there was even the slightest possibility of hijacking the gold planes, he ought to send a convoy with him. It doesn't even make sense, you know. Uh, hello. Uh, this is Lieutenant Kendall. We, uh, we were just having a cup of chocolate. All right. Won't you join us? I really don't think you would want me to. Oh, sure, the more the merrier. Sit down. I'm Colas, the A number one, don't care. Colonel Golas? 
You want to report to me? Yeah, that's right, Colonel, but there's some sort of a mix-up. That you foisted yourself on Miss Van Duren? Oh, now, wait a minute, Colonel. There's been no foisting around here. The lady will not require your company any longer. She can take care of herself. Put in my office. Jen, you are making a mistake. Lieutenant Candle has been very kind. Why, he saved me from... Throw that pig and his monkey out of here. Get him out. Oh, wait a minute. He hasn't done... Get him out. Now, wait a minute. He didn't do anything. You keep out of this. Oh, so you want to play, huh? You've got it. She has to be engaged to the head man. What a man. <laughs> oh, but what a gal. Good morning, Lieutenant. What's good about it? Take him away. We can release him. Hey, Colonel, how about me? Lieutenant, you have placed me in a very embarrassing position. Oh, yeah, I guess I did it that, didn't I? Miss Van Duren explained how you saved her from an accident and how, in gratitude, she accepted your invitation. Oh, she did, huh? I should like to repay her obligation to you. Oh, there's no obligation, Colonel, none. Well, I should like to overlook the entire matter, but that's impossible. Military discipline, you understand? Oh, sure. I suppose you know the penalty for striking a superior officer. Well, I got a rough idea. Under the circumstances, about ten years. Ten years? If the court might approve that you were struck with traitor's intent. Execution. Oh, but Colonel, you wouldn't do a thing like that, would you? No. Huh? I'm not the vindictive person. I shall order you release immediately. Oh, well, that's swell. It's... You know, I had you pegged all wrong, Colonel. There is, of course, uh, one condition. Yeah? Uh, you will have to resign your commission. Oh, I'd be glad to do that. Tickle to death. But you see, we can't afford to lose the pilot of your ability entirely. You will uh, sign up to fly the civil airlines. Civil airline? You mean that death trap that flies to Mount Panasta? Every airline has its accidents. I always did hate flying over graveyards. Hmm. Better over one than uh, in one. Then you're giving me my choice, huh? Yeah. That's, that's fine. Thanks. Check. One kick. Maybe wine, huh? Ooh. Nuts. Bolts. Check. Mr. Dunn, I'm worried. These aeroplanes, you know, I can fly that crate with my two arms around a blonde. Yes, but these two aeroplanes carrying gold both cracks up. Yes, but I'm not carrying gold this trip. You're not carrying gold? No. No. No gold, no crack ups. Maybe. But tell me. Why you take this civil airline job anyway? You could run away. Well, with no word from touch, I gotta stick around and find out what happened. No, I don't like even to think about it. No. Always remember one thing. Never run out on a pal. This is the American way, eh? The American way. Oh. Now, look. 
While I'm in Fort Panasta, why don't you run over there in the shade and take yourself a nice snooze, huh? Snooze? Yeah. What is snooze? Oh, you mean a nip? Yeah, but no nips. That's nice. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kendall. You have a passenger. Miss Van Duren will fly with you to Mount Panasta. Well, do you think it's safe, Colonel? I think so. Now that you know that Miss Van Duren is my fiancée. I was merely referring to the personal safety of Miss Van Duren. So was I. You see, my father is ill. We just received a radio message. I trust we don't trouble you too much, Mr. Kendall. My job is to fly the freight. I would have flown Miss Van Duren myself, but... Uh, is that all, Colonel? That's all. Except uh, you won't forget to take very good care of Miss Van Duren. Forget? In this one particular case, an elephant and I have one thing in common. Fifty miles across the jungle by air, five hundred by water. <laughs> you get there, you can't even anchor a boat. I don't know why they don't build a road to this cockeyed joint. Not through a bad jungle. Seems to me they're going to have an awful lot of trouble to put a couple of guns on a rock. That's how much you know. Fort Panasta will be the Gibraltar of this country. Oh, sure, sure. It's really very nice of you to fly me to my father. One kind of freight's the same as another. You have no reason to be angry with me. The last thing I wanted was for you and the Colonel to fight over me. Well, whatever gave you the idea that the Colonel and I were fighting over you, huh? And he was right. A girl who is engaged to one man should not be seen in public with another. Listen, sister. If that were true in the USA, every cocktail joint would close overnight. You are making it very difficult for me to be friends with you. I've been friends with Dave's all the way from Singapore to Saskatoon. And never in my whole life did I ever fool around with one marked private property. Get it? No. Well, I'm allergic to a knife in the back. You're an impossible person. You must have had a very unhappy childhood. And that I did. I've been making up for it ever since. Wrong. <laughs> you know, I always thought that those wooden shoes gave you flat feet. What gave you that idea? You've been wearing a wooden hat, perhaps? <laughs> you know, there's one thing I can't figure out. How a girl like you could go for a starch pants like that Golas. He isn't a starch pants. He's one of the finest men I ever met. When my father and I came here, we were without friends. Without anything. Dan has been very kind. He used his influence to obtain this position for my father. Out of the kindness of his heart? Yes. That's what I like about him. And did you see those shoulders? Probably well, padded to the hilt. See any familiar landmarks? Yes. There is a plateau. I'm anxious to see how they progress.
You shouldn't have come here. But, but, Mealing Radio, you were ill. Oh, just the fever again. But you, you shouldn't have come. Father, why aren't they working? Where is everybody? They quit. They have not been paid for two months. The payroll was supposed to be here the day before yesterday. But they tell me Plechnikov is missing. Yes, I know. This is Dan Kendall, the new pilot. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? You brought the money? No, only freight. It gets worse. When the first payroll did not arrive, Mealing, my assistant, and I, we talked them into going on with the work. Talk to them? Why don't you radio Mazak? The government would make them to return to work. I know. They would send soldiers. I have seen enough of bloodshed. Job has to be done, then. Yes, Mr. Kendall, the God. Yes, it's got to be done. In my country, many of my friends are dead. Others homeless because jobs like this were, were not done. Can't you make them realize they're building for themselves? Oh, these natives. All they know is they get for work gold. That's all. <laughs> If you monkeys want to start anything, go ahead. Gold in your plane we want. There's no gold in there, you fools. Go on, search for yourself. No gold, only machines. Why don't you go back to work to behave yourselves? The first thing you know, people won't like you. We know work. Two pilots crashed bringing gold to you. Yes, but we don't get it. What's that compared to the lives of two men? Don't you realize they're putting their guns in here for your protection? We're fools for working when we don't get money. Look, Fuzzy Britches, I'll make a deal with you. I'll guarantee you gold in three days. Gold in three days if you go back to work. He lie. No. I think he speak good. Go we'll work three days. Now you're talking, partner. But if no gold three days, we go home. I'll come back no more. Okay. Go on, break it up. Come on, boss. Quite a young man. The American. Oh, yes. Thank you for what you did for my father. You don't get the idea I was grandstanding for you. You're not fooling me. No, I guess I'm not. Hey. Looks like a wrecked plane down there. It might be Pechnikov. If it is, we've, we've got to get down to him. It, he might still be alive. But there's no place to land. What's the matter with that place? You can't land there. Then why not? You can bet your bottom dollar if I was down there. Pech wouldn't hesitate a minute. No sign of nothing. Said he's alive, though. Look, he dragged himself out. Look. Somebody shot him. 
or he shot somebody. Pitch wasn't one to give up very easy enough. Look, there's been several people around here. Then I'll try to... Look, darling, I'll take you back to the plane. You understand, I've got to see this thing through. No. You must go. I'll go, too. All right, I thought you were okay. Come on, stay close. Check's hideout. They were right. He's been shooting down the plane. I'll tell you one thing. If Pechnikov's in there, I've got to get him. You will please to put up the hands, please. It's Bench. Ah, oh, the young lady knows me, eh? Ah, I do not remember the pleasure. Oh, your, your pictures are... All of a mosaic. Tell me, what do you do here, huh? Nothing. Just the young lady and I are merely taking a stroll, that's all. Oh, it's very romantic, a little stroll. Hey, <laughs> Felix? <laughs> it's a very nice jungle you have, Vanchek. Now, if you'll be kind enough to give me back my gun, we'll be on our way. No, I think maybe better you come with me. Look at the girl, Felix, maybe she got gone. Don't you dare touch me! You? <laughs> Felix, I think maybe she heard about you. <laughs> Come. No, it is impossible. I cannot let you go. Where are you looking? Oh, it's my new coat, huh? <laughs> it don't fit so good. That's because I was not there when they make it, you see. A friend, they leave it to me. What did you do with him? Come on. What'd you do with him? Oh, touch the coat. You're wearing his jacket. <laughs> now, look at the holes. Look at those. He's not the same, huh? <laughs> no, my friend, he's not my gun that killed him. Somebody already have do it when we find him. Hey, Finigo? Uh. You expect me to believe that? You think maybe I steal the gold like they say in Mosaic too, huh? Of course you did. You and your bandits? No, you make big mistake, young lady. Banshek is no bandit. And it's too bad for you, I am not, because if I was every day from the run of ordinary bandit, I could let you go. But because I am not, I gotta kill you. Pancha, you can't do that. Oh, yes, my friend, I can do that, because it is for the good of my people. But how is it going to help your people to, to kill us? Well, young lady, it's this way. Mozak is my country. I love her like, well, maybe like you love this fella. And one time, Mozak have fine, free government. And I am big general in the army. Uh, do I bore you, my friend? No, no, go right ahead. Comes into the politics a new party. Not all bad men, but the few who fool the others. They want to take away from my people the freedom. <laughs> but first, they got to catch me, the big general. I fool them. I run away. Understand? Yeah, but what's that got to do with us? Well, I come back here in the jungle. I get new loyal army, strong men. Someday we get strong enough, we go back, push out from the politics the bad party and give the freedom back to my people. So I can take no chance that they, they know where we are before we are strong enough to do it. Look, Panchak. You see, I merely landed here to try and find Pechnikov. You are a soldier like me. You, you got to believe in this killing. It is for my people. It isn't for me. Well, when is the big show? Well, we cannot do it tonight. You see, this is Fiesta de la Nuada. 
In my country, that means feast of the new moons. We always celebrate with the music and the wine, and we never mix the business with pleasure, so I got to kill you in the morning. Well, come, I show you to your prison. Here you go, Silvo, over there. Papa, Papa, I have for you fruit. <laughs> hey, he's very nice, too, Nando. But we got guests. Remember what I always told you? Thank you, Nana. Well, maybe she no want one. No, she no got much appetite. <laughs> but you run away and play, huh? Yes, my little boy, Nando. Uh, you must please excuse his manners, not so good. But his mama, she was killed when we run away from Mozak. And <laughs> I think maybe I'm not such good puppy in the jungle. But I wasting your time and you no got much. Come. Excuse, but uh, this is all we can spare for a prison. To say the least, it's cozy. <gasps> oh, it's nothing. Only Montalas, a snake, a traitor. He tried to betray us for the reward, but we catch him. Do not worry. Tomorrow, we shoot him first. I will see you in the morning. Early. Don't bother leaving a call. Then, what are we going to do? <laughs> I don't know. I'm beginning to think he means it. Someday I'll buy you one of those big ice cream films. What is it, darling? You oh, weren't just thinking about Gullas. All of that is so far away. And it doesn't make much difference now. Do it by 
by myself. We can break through, we climb, camouflage with branches, then go into trees. Hey, bud, you got something. Come on, Dan. Let's do it. Guard and let us know when he's clear. It's okay now. Up you go. to spoil our party. Nando, what's... Oh, he shoot you. He shoot my little rabbit. Nando, speak to me. Transfusion. Transfusion? I can plan to the out. He's got to have a doctor right away or he'll die. No. No, don't say that, please. He cannot be. He must not die. He is the only one I got. Take him to Dr. Villiday. He's my friend. He won't talk. It's the only way, Banshek. We won't say a word about your hiding place. We promise. I believe you. We go. No, Banjo, you can't go. You know what'll happen if you're caught. Yes, I understand now all my plans mixed up, but my people, they got to know that I, I cannot leave my baby. Easy, Banjo. Get some gauze and cotton.
the reward. As soon as we have him in prison. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but I thought you would want to take charge of this personally. Are you the men ready? Two arms, spots, sir. Good. You know what to do. Good night. Nando. Nando Nino. The rabbit, he got away? No. You little rabbit, he don't get away. My little rabbit, he don't get away, need No, I agree. He got my little rabbit, make him big, fine, strong one someday. We'll be hunting tigers in no time at all, Nando. Before I'll have to rest here for a few days, Mr. Kendall. I may need you again. I'll be around for a while, Doc. How about it, pal? You, my friend, and this so nice young lady, never I will forget. <laughs> Military police. Doctor, where is the back way? There is no back way, only one way out there. Huh? Only this one? Yes. Oh, it's too, too bad. Well, time is short. I know what I must got to do. Don't be frightened, nobody. Just stay in the back. Be scared no more. I understand just what I gotta do. Benson, what are you going to do? I think you understand, my friend. Huh? <laughs> are they going to put you in prison? Oh, nice young lady. Their prison can never hold bunch. No prison can hold bunch. my heels for two days. I promised these people gold. But in this country, it is not so easy to gather together that much money in gold. Yes, Major. The men of Fort Finesta have rebelled. The radio is dead. We cannot tell what damage may be done. What did I tell you? Busted wide open. Mr. Kendall, go to the airport and wait. You will have the payroll at once if I have to bring it myself. Now you're talking. I'll have the ship warmed up. Later. Christmas, how many times have I told you not to spell America with a small K? I'm expecting the payroll any minute. Now keep your eyes open. Hear what has happened there, Christmas. Christmas, I want you to do a favor and get my jacket like a good boy. Come on, darling. General Alden, Colonel Golas, you will take a squadron immediately to Fort Downer Light. 
Right. Very good, sir. I thought Van Duren wanted no military interference. No, no, we must have no bloodshed. But the situation demands immediate action. I think the matter can be settled by getting the payroll there. Yeah. General, give me three hours and I guarantee that the payroll will get there this time. I will personally convoy the shipments. Then if I fail to settle the dispute, you can send my squadron. Your plan sounds logical, Colonel. Oh, Dad, I love you. You flying up? No, not yet. Anything wrong? No, no, nothing wrong at all, Dad. Sit down. I have some news you might be interested in. What is it? I talked to Colonel Goulart. What did you say? I told him that our engagement was a mistake and that I'm in love with you. I'll bet that made him happy. Then understood. He was very nice about it. Well, maybe I've misjudged the guy. If I have, he can apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Better the payroll come quick. We try it at Panasta. Soraya! Ben, is my father all right? Well, nothing's come over the radio that says he isn't, darling. Now, please don't worry. Please. Oh, but you're awaiting the answer. No, I'm not. Christmas, get out of here. Go on, scram. Get out. You hear me? Dad, I'm going with you. Now, look, honey. If everything isn't all right, I'll come back and get you. If you think you're going to get back safely, why, you can take me with you. I'm through talking. I tell you, you stay here. Now you stay there. Well, well, if it isn't the Colonel. <laughs> I must say this is a very unpleasant surprise. Oh, still joking, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here to escort you personally to Mount Penasta. I must say that I'm flattered beyond words. Of course, there's no longer any panchek, so really there's no longer any danger. However, the general wishes that way. <laughs> well, I guess this must be it. Yes, this must be it. After you, Colonel. Uh, I'm a little superstitious, you don't mind. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> We have the payroll, sir. Okay, you can load now. Well, you can take off now. I'll be right with you. Au revoir, Colonel. Mr. Dunn. Two gold shipments. Two crack ups. Don't you worry, Christmas. Third time's the charm. Keep your feet on the ground. Wait any longer. They are getting out of control. I've been against this, but now the men are threatening to sabotage the foot. I told you. 
told you that... Dan, the box is on fire. What? The box on fire. Here, take over. Little right runner, that's it. don't you? You're a very charming boyfriend. But he got my father's appointment. Yeah, very clever, these fifth columnists. All right, here he comes again. Hold on, we're going out.
I gotta get back to Mozart and get that payroll. seeking to destroy our defenses have been dealt with. Colonel Golatz, unfortunately, was not here for his punishment. All his confederates will be executed. Correction. His confederates have been executed. We welcome back the followers of the late Andros Banjak a true patriot! Good. This is the American way. <laughs> <laughs> 